Scenes like this play out in Hong Kong almost every weekend now. It's been this way since June 2019. Now, the unrest is getting more and more violent. So what's going on in Hong Kong? In April of 2019, Hong Kong's government attempted to amend its extradition laws. The proposed changes would allow criminal suspects from the city to be tried in mainland China. Critics said the bill would curtail the city's independence, as well as free speech. The extradition measure was seen as a pro-Beijing policy and indicative of the growing influence of mainland China over the city. In May 2019, the U.S. weighed in, as a congressional commission warned that the bill could pose risks for national security and economic interests. Hong Kong's chief executive, Carrie Lam, who's kind of like a mayor and governor rolled into one, pushed the bill forward anyway. So in early June of 2019, hundreds of thousands of protesters marched in downtown Hong Kong. A few weeks later, protesters demonstrated near the city's government offices. The demonstrations eventually grew violent when protesters began throwing bricks and metal poles at police. The police responded with batons, 150 rounds of tear gas, and rubber bullets. And the government classified the event as a riot, which meant anyone arrested there could spend up to 10 years in prison. Four days later, nearly 2 million people took to the streets, according to organizers. Police, though, said that the number was closer to 338,000. Those protesters gave the government five demands. The first was a total withdrawal of the extradition legislation and a resignation from Carrie Lam. They also wanted a retraction, so the protest would not be classified as a riot and they wanted an investigation into the actions of the police during those violent protests. Finally, they wanted a release of anyone who had been arrested in connection with the protests. Not long after, Lamb said the bill was dead and apologized for how she handled the situation. And I have furthermore undertaken that because this bill over the last few months has caused so much anxiety and worries and differences in opinion, I will not, this is an undertaking, I will not proceed again with this legislative exercise. But the chief executive fell short of meeting protesters' demands to withdraw the bill completely. So on July 1st of 2019, on the 22nd anniversary of the handover of Hong Kong from British to Chinese rule, more protests broke out. And those demonstrations continued throughout the month. Hong Kong has long been Asia's financial hub. But that reputation has been shaken as the city has also become the center of Asian unrest. Protests in the former British colony are starting to bite into Hong Kong's economy. The number of tour groups coming from mainland China has dropped from an average of 7,800 per month to 5,641 in June of 2019, right as the protests approach their peak. Also in June, occupancy rates of the city's hotels were down 20% from last year. They're expected to be down 40% in July. But that's not all that's weighing on Hong Kong's economy. The trade tensions between the U.S. and China have slowed economic growth, according to the city's financial secretary. In fact, during the first quarter of 2019, the city had its slowest growth in a decade. For Asia operations, you know, either you put your headquarters in Hong Kong or in Singapore. So, you know, from long-term perspective, you know, if Hong Kong does not maintain relatively stable, you know, political condition. I think, you know, for the MNCs, they have to hedge, you know, mm. from their perspective. So this definitely will, will kind of have some negative impact into Hong Kong's uh, status as financial center, as well as the Asian operational center for a lot of, from a lot of companies' perspective. Hong Kong also remains one of the most expensive cities in the world, and the unrest there has squeezed citizens even more. Hong Kong's real estate market was rated the most expensive in the world for the fifth consecutive year by real estate firm CBRE. The average price of a modest one-bedroom home in the city is $1.2 million. A 121-square-foot nano apartment recently sold for a quarter of a million dollars, about $2,041 per square foot. Meanwhile, the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment in the city is $2,118. And the average monthly salary for a man is only about $2,500, while the average salary for a woman drops to $1,950, according to the Hong Kong Census and Statistics Department. The housing crisis in the city has gotten so bad, there's a plan to build an $80 billion artificial island to deal with the problem. It's also why many experts believe protests are about more than just the extradition bill.
One of the big things behind these protests, uh, quite frankly, is the terrible affordability of housing in Hong Kong, which really is upsetting a lot of young people and middle, middle income people. So in a way, the housing affordability issue is part and parcel of the protest movement. Government officials, including Executive Carrie Lam, have said that the extradition bill is dead. But activists want a formal withdrawal. So the protests are likely to continue until that happens. Fear for the city's future has caused many residents to consider leaving. And that could lead to a brain drain in Asia's financial hub. At least two migration consultancy firms have seen a jump in inquiries since June, according to the South China Morning Post. People looking to leave cite concerns over increasing unrest, dwindling freedoms, and growing influence from mainland China. And then there's cost of living. As a result, Many young people have been exploring options in Australia, Canada, and Taiwan. And while the Chinese government may have had its feelings hurt by the city's protesters, things could get a lot worse if young people start leaving the city. Major companies could leave too. After all, Singapore is another major financial hub, and it's not that far away. <laughs> 